Magandang Umaga, Jaycation Nation. Today we are going on a trip. We're leaving Manila and we're headed to the mountains. That's right. There's actually mountains here in the Philippines. No beach, just the coldest city in all of the Philippine Islands. And that is Baguio. We're gonna take a victory liner over there and I'll tell you how much it costs. We're gonna spend 24 hours there and check out Baguio and what it has to offer. And I've heard that it's the home of ube. I heard there's just the best ube out there. So I'm excited to try it all out. So this is the Victory Liner and the ticket booth is over this way but I booked it online and I'll tell you about it. So this is the Victory Liner schedule. Cubao to Alongapo, they have Cubao to Baguio, Cubao to Zambales, Cubao to Alaminos, Cubao to Bolinao and Cubao to Lingayen. And this is the booking booths right here online booking redemption advanced booking and then over this way you get to the waiting area so i went on the victory liner website and i booked round trip to baguio on the way there there's a few different classes. You got your first class, you have your aircon, uh, which is probably the more ghetto one. First class is probably the second best one, and then your royal class, which is the ones with the beds. So for this ride to Baguio, I'm gonna take the first class over, and then on the way back, I'm gonna take the royal class back, and that's the one with the bed. I heard it's about a three or four hour drive to Baguio up the mountain, so I'm excited to check it all out. I'll also make sure to link Victory Liner's website down below just so you can book it. It was 999 pesos to book it on the way there and then it was 1500 pesos on the way back and that's the uh, royal class is what I got. Really dumb vacation mistake. I put the wrong dates. I put the dates in for next week and I had to rebook and I paid like an extra 250 pesos to rebook. But that was on me. I booked it for this time next week. <laughs> Good thing I checked a couple nights ago or otherwise I would have been scrambling. Oh, this is actually next level. They have a huge screen here. I just saw it a second ago. <laughs> and it updates you with your departures and arrivals. All right, good thing I read this because it says that this is my, not my ticket, it's my voucher redemption. So I have to go to the ticket booth and redeem it. And there you go, online redemption lane. So we're good to go. She actually gave me my ticket for going there and going back. So I have my other ticket in my pocket for going back. 999 pesos and I'm sitting at seat 19, which is an assigned seat. So Victory Liner even has a lounge here you could hang out in. And then there's four different stores this way. You got Store Delphi, which is like a Sari Sari store. Potato Corner's not open yet. Lion Cove. Oh, nice. They got Gulaman and Buko. Uh, Moon Leaf and a Lawson, which is like a 7-Eleven. Check that out. That's pretty cool. They actually have an all-day breakfast meal. 80 pesos. I'm not a breakfast guy, so we're not going to do that. For those of y'all asking where there's lumpia, they have lumpia over here. Fried chicken, langonisa. This is your Gulaman and Buko. It's good. <laughs> so this is actually Dad Cation's hood, Kubao. He grew up over here. I always hear his stories, man. It's so funny. That guy likes to embellish his stories. He's like, it used to rain so much here. I used to swim to school. I'm like, bruh, really? You used to swim to school? Come on now. But yeah, Dadcation grew up here. So the names of the streets here are after US states. And I think he said he grew up in Nevada. Kind of funny that his son actually goes to Nevada a lot for a career, right? Not very hard to figure out that Baguio is right here. This is a Baguio bus, but it leaves 15 minutes before mine leaves. And I think it's just the air conditioned one. This leaves at 8 and mine leaves at 8.15, but the steward will come out and he will tell you when the board. And there it is. 7060 to Baguio, first class. That's the one we're taking. All right, guys, let's go in. Hi. How are you? Thank you. All right, guys, here is the first class bus. Nice bigger seats. I'm seat 19. Okay, so the numbers are down below here. Nice aircon, and then you can put your bags up top. I think I'm in the back, seat 19. And there I am, seat 19. All right, toilet in the bathroom, PKation's happy. There's a sink and a toilet, nice and clean. Check this out, they even have USB ports here. Just regular USB ports. Plenty of legroom here. 
up top you got your air conditioning and some privacy curtains here and you can recline too there's even a footrest down here too and they also have compartments for your smaller bags up top so I put my bag up there we'll probably get some editing done while we're here in the buses about three to four hour ride but uh, I'll enjoy the views at first and then we'll, we'll bust the laptop out well check this out they even give you a banana apple a journey season with flavorful moments it's nice and hot too they also give you waters nice I'm liking it all right let's try out this apple empanada looking thing it's actually a, like a cheese beef empanada it's not apple-y <laughs> Good. Good morning breakfast. I guess Banana Apple is just the name of the company that makes the empanada. It was a meat and cheese empanada. You got the water and we're about five minutes past the departure time but we're leaving right now so give or take five minutes we left. Um, 8.20 right now. And there is your Kubao traffic. Dadcation's hood. This is a trip. This is like the area where Dad Cation grew up. His street now is called the Manalo Street, but it used to be Nevada. He used to walk these streets as a kid. His first 17 years of existence. This was Dad Cation's home. Such a trip. There, F Manalo. This is where Dad Cation's from. This area. As a Philam, it's really cool to see where your parents are from and uh, it kind of gives you a visual perspective of the surroundings they had. Even though it's 2024, you kind of can envision how it was back in their days when they were growing up and uh, it just makes you more uh, in touch with where you came from, where your direct family, your mom and your dad came from. So it's really cool to just even drive by the place. That's a huge uh, Iglesia Ni Cristo here. There's Dad Cation, guys. <laughs> They even have a Wi-Fi connection here for those of y'all that may not have cell reception. About three hours in, we are starting to ascend up the mountain to Baguio. Really productive ride. I was able to get a little nap in, edit my entire Makati video. Check that out if you haven't yet. And now I'm just going to enjoy the ride up the mountain because I kind of get motion sickness every now and then if I'm not paying attention to which way we're going. So when we start winding up the mountain, I really like looking straight ahead and just seeing where we're going so I don't get motion sickness. But we're continuing up the mountain. I didn't realize how high Mago is. I knew it was very high, but it's uh, 4,921 feet above sea level. And you can basically get your head above the clouds. Now, comment down below, guys. What do you do to combat motion sickness when you're on a bus? I'm fine, but for a little bit there, I was uh, a little dizzy. As we ascend to Baguio, I've noticed a lot of the towns weaving through the roads here. A lot of carpentry is going on, a lot of wood products, and some cool souvenir shops, restaurants. And you start seeing the pine trees because Baguio is known for having enormous pine trees. We're going through tunnels, swerving around these roads here. It's nice and sunny right now. It's actually in the 80s. And you can see these ads on the mountains. They get really creative with some of these ads like TV shows, movies, or any type of products here in the Philippines. You get like the biggest faces of celebrities here on the middle of a mountain. Four hours plus later, we finally arrived to Baguio here at the Victory Liner bus stop. So I purposely booked the hotel right next to this bus station. It's the Wyndham. We'll show you. We're gonna do a little room tour and tell you how I got it. All right, finally step foot here in Baguio. I'm gonna check into the room recharge a little bit and we will have lunch because I'm kind of starving right now. So this is their station. Looks like they have a bunch of different lanes going back to Kubao over here. And we gotta find the Wyndham and it's right next to it. I just need to get my bearings here, I guess. Well, there's my hotel right there. I don't know how to get there. I'm like in the second floor here, the waiting area is covered with pines. And this is the Victory Liner counter right here. And they also have food, Mr. Donut, Biryani Express, Baguio Fields, and Krispy Crust. And there it is, there's my hotel. Just gotta cross this bridge on the second floor. It's actually a really nice bus station here. A little confusion because when you enter from the bus station, you're in the back area of the Microtel. The lobby's on the fourth floor. Clutch that they have filtered water here fill up that water bottle all right looks like we found it there's the front desk and we can check in here let's do it dude there's some sort of party going on in there nice lobby here so second floor lobby we're in a 315 gotta go up all right found it 
Boom. All right, Jaycationers, so we just got to the Microtel by Wyndham. Since I am a Wyndham business earner credit card holder, they give you priority check-in and upgraded room, and I actually use my points for this, and I think it was only about 7,000 points. I would have usually paid about 60 bucks, I believe, for the one night here. Yeah, I paid zero, so I just had to get my bus ticket situated. Everything's built here on hills, so I'm on the third floor overlooking the parts of the city here, and I'm right next to the Victory Liner bus stop, which is amazing because tomorrow when I check out at 12, my bus is at 12.15. Get on that, back to Kubao, and then back to BGC. The room is nice. You got a huge desk space here, can get my laptop working, flat screen TV, smaller mirror, and a light over here, and your refrigerator, which comes in clutch. You got also get a big wooden luggage rack over here as well. You even got this nice leather bench area with the air conditioning under it, and you can just sit back, look out the window, and contemplate life here. 4,000 plus feet above sea level. All right, so this is the closet area. You have a safe that works perfectly, four digit code, and they give you six wooden hangers. I really like these. Microtel by Wyndham slippers. So I didn't even have to bring my flip flops with me and a couple of drawers too and a laundry bag. Just because we're in the Philippines doesn't mean that these hotel reviews don't stop. They upgraded me to uh, two queen beds. There's nice lighting behind the bed stands over here. You get this wooden box nightstand with a Philips alarm clock, a couple of outlets, your telephone and some stationery and a holy Bible. And then there's plastic on the remote controls. If you go to Tita's house, she put plastic on there so that it doesn't get dirty, man. You also get an ice bucket with a carafe and two glasses, a carafe. That's pretty clutch. You can go outside and fill it up with the filtered water outside. So that's a good thing to have for you travelers. You also got your double lock, your privacy sign, boom, boom, and a light here. And the bathroom's actually clutch. You have your hair dryer, two glasses, you get a low to the ground toilet, a shelf with soap, a dental kit, and a couple of face towels, as well as your shower has a rainfall shower, hair and body wash that is community, and your regular towels are over here, toilet paper's here. That's a little far from the toilet though. You gotta reach on over. And then a floor towel so you don't slip and slide after your shower here. Everything you may need. So it is a non-smoking room and they do have a place here called Amare La Cucina Microtel and uh, breakfast is free from six to 10. They also offer free coffee. And where are all these like little bugs, man? Man, there's like, these little bugs around here. Uh-oh. All right, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Sunset's at six. I don't want to be out at night. We will try to hustle and see so much of the city. I'm going to get up early tomorrow morning and try to get that Ube jam at this place called Good Shepherd. No, not Good Shepherd Parish in Mira Mesa. Good Shepherd, Baguio. So these nuns, they're the ones that make this amazing Ube jam and it's known worldwide and you have to line up early for it so i'm gonna go try that out i want to make a walk over to the malls and the market and burnham park and we can show that whole area today so they do have instant coffee over here you get your coffee cups and you can just grab the water the hot water here to make that coffee in the morning so this is their restaurant amare and then the bus terminals here and we can just go straight outside here good thing i got sunblock on and we got to start walking so Amare La Cucina Wood Fire Brick Oven Pizza, all right. All right, your travel vlogger, Jaycation, is about to walk these streets of Baguio, a place you've never been to before. I've heard my parents and family talking about Baguio all these years. Always wanted to go to the Philippine mountains. Always going to beaches here. We will go to beach at some point in this trip, so stay tuned. Let's go to Burnham Park, which is a very famous park, and go to SM too. It's actually a pretty warm day here in Baguio. It's in the 80s but got my sunblock on so we're good to go Ooh, Dado's Eatery looks pretty good I believe this area right here is a amusement park and they have a huge Ferris wheel right here we're gonna keep walking down this way with no sidewalk man I'm no bato all right guys we made it to SM here at Baguio let's find some lunch I am starving I am feeling the Easter colors over here pretty nice look at these flowers they ain't real of course the hashtag is Baguio feels at 
SM. It's actually a really nice mall. It looks like they got views over on the end that way. And look, a Uniqlo. Wow. Look at these views. And we are high in the clouds. Look at that. These clouds are almost level with us. And that is Burnham Park right there, I believe. Okay, now I'm getting a grasp of where everything is. It's like a mini valley over here. And you have a ton of patio seating this way. I'm starving, so I'm going to get something here. Welcome to SM City Baguio. We're headed up to the terrace. Wow, this is even nicer of a view up here. Look at that. Kind of reminds me of uh, San Francisco over that way with all the hills. Sky Terrace. A lot of kids are playing here. People hanging out in the shade and just enjoying the beautiful Baguio views. They have these special Baguio mugs. That is an auto cop right there. We making that happen. Oh snap, there's a Jerry's Grill right here. Should I eat here? Or should we go to Max's restaurant? And this is the front side of SM right here. Man, Baguio is pretty vast. The thirst is real. The guy. Calamansi juice. I wish they put it in like a big gulp. Cause I'm gonna kill all this. You gotta mix the ice around so it gets colder. Yeah, that's what's up. I love me that calamansi juice. Unfortunately, they don't have the ube makapuno. We're gonna have to find some ube in the holy grail capital of ube. I didn't realize how big these servings are. I'm definitely gonna have to uh, doggy bag these. Got some pancit palabok. Oh, they got the calamansi too. Looks like it comes with like lettuce and other good stuff. Egg. We you know your boy, no rice jaycation. So we gotta mix the uh, sizzling seasick right here. Get that egg yolk all switched up. Nice, healthy portion. Let's sprinkle some of that calamansi. Cheers. Mm. First seasoning plate of the trip. So good. Try the palabo. Tasty. And you got shrimp in it too. Mmm. Needed a big meal. Once I got here to Baguio, I'm starving. We'll fill ourselves up and go on a walk. San Miguel Light. Drink the champs. Oh man. That Palabo. I'm gonna have to take that to go because that thing can feed four, bro. I'll be honest with you guys, Jerry's Grill really was just a height. The Palabok wasn't that great, even though they gave you a huge helping. The seasick was good, but I don't know, man. Service was a little lethargic over there, and I was just starving, and I couldn't find a place, and I was like, I give up, dude. I'm just gonna eat at Jerry's since I haven't ate here yet. But we're gonna walk around, check out a church, check out the park, and uh, maybe get some ube and strawberries. What I do like about Baguio is the humidity is way less. It actually does feel 82 and I'm not sweating my butt off. That's a nice Baguio sign right there. Oh, I'm so full, so we gotta walk up and down these hills. Check out this little roundabout over here, right by the YMCA, city of Baguio. We made it over to the Baguio Cathedral, Our Lady of Atonement. Nice cathedral here. Man, I'm out of shape, guys. Man, you lose breath quickly up here in these mountains. They even have a Ten Commandments tombstone here. All right, we're in search of the city market and then the park. I also like how the lampposts are shaped like pine cones. I thought they were strawberries, but they're pine cones. Now you know what they say about Assumption Road when you assume. <laughs> Looks like we're getting closer to the public market. We're getting there. We're in this plaza here in the bottom of the hill now. We're getting there. Well, there it is, Baguio Public Markets. Let's see what Baguio City Market has to offer. All right, we made it into the market and it looks like they're selling various types of goods. Bags, walis, you got ube jams over here, but I want to try the nun ube jam. Different types of strawberry jams here. Yeah, you can even buy Baguio sandos over here. Some Baguio shirts. And then you get over to the actual produce area here. Really cool. And this is the produce section. Look at all that stuff. And all these wick baskets. And look, they have <laughs> the Wallis, just like the Dodgers are gonna get this season in the playoffs. The Wallis. Look, they have my ube. Pangalan ko JJ kasi. All right, let's grab ourselves some uh, Baguio stuff right here. I got the J and J ube jam. I had to. It called my name, literally. So they sell fruits over here and Dory's kakanin. Oh, mukang sarap. <laughs> Look at that. One fifty per box, ten per slice. 
Mukhang sarap yan. I still haven't seen some strawberries. Oh, they sell Tocino and some other stuff over here. Look at that. All right, let's keep walking. One thing I always do when I go to a new city in the Philippines, I try to get a sando from that city. So I had to get this travel Baguio one. I ain't gonna lie, your boy woke up at five in the morning. Even though I had a little bit of a nap ski on the bus, I'm feeling a little drained. So uh, we're gonna go to that park, back to the hotel, take a little nap ski. This is where you gotta be careful for pickpockets. When it's crowded like this, let's go down here. That's a pretty sick Clarkson shorts right there. <laughs> Some Filipinas jerseys. This is like a mini chunge over here. Selling toys, watches, glasses, jerseys, everything. So the CR is 15 pesos, but I had to go. When you gotta go, you gotta go. That's a dope. Hawaii, shout out to Hawaii. Mahalo, aloha. These jeepneys are super sick to look at, all the different designs. That Hawaii one so far was one of my faves. We're gonna go to Burnham Park, see the lake over there, and see what else they have to offer. Almost my name, Joy J. Eatery. <laughs> Check this out. The umbrella walkway. There's a festival called the Panabenga Festival. The Baguio Flower Festival about to happen or happened. Got me wanting to sing. When the sun shine, we'll shine together. Thought you and I'd be here forever. I don't know the rest of the lyrics anymore. This park reminds me of Retiro Park in Madrid. And I kind of got the Porto feel here without the river running through with all the hills here. So these are the prices for the uh, pontoon boats. 200 pesos for a small, 400 for a large. It's actually really good prices. Now, if you want to do these swan boats, they're 300 per person. Not bad. And this is the entryway for the Burnham Park swan boat. Well, this looks to be one of your only bodies of water in this area. And there's the SM city where we ate lunch and checked out all the amazing views. Oh man, I totally want to see that Igorot Park. So let's go walk over that way. Oh, I like this area. You can rent out these mini pedicabs and these tricycles and these unicycles. Just ride around this whole area. That's a really fun family activity to do. I gotta go find that Igorot Park because I gotta pay homage to my peoples, the Igorots. Shout out to them, them Bahag boys. Breathe Baguio is their hashtag. This is the front of the park right here. Momcation and dadcation, no, I do not like these things sitting out on the table without napkins. Pay respect to the dead fish, man. Inanap ko, ito ang Igorot Park. Look at this, guys. This is all the Igorot warriors. Amazing, I love it. My peoples. It's called the Cordillera Freedom Monument. And there it is, the Igorot Garden. Amazing statue. I want to show you these cool hangout areas here on the corner. People playing chess. People just sitting in these stone benches over here. Yeah, and then you got the Igorots in the middle. See now through these gates, simplest form of playing soccer on a dirt field. Well, the grass is just dead. Harrison Bazaar and Food Court and the Hills of Baguio. Right across the way is the Baguio Museum. This right here is Sky Ranch Baguio. That is their amusement park. Looks like it's closed right now, but there's some rides here. Yeah? When I get back to the SM here, that ube, whatever I'm gonna get, it's gonna hit hard. And check this out, it's a food truck fest area. They have Mexican food. Taberna Mexicali El Patron. All right, we're gonna try black scoot coffee. This looks really good. All right, strawberry and cream it is, let's go. So I decided to grab this uh, drink and then watch the sunset here in the Sunset Terrace because it's a really nice view. And then tomorrow we'll head over to Good Shepherd, check out the Ubud Jam over there and the nuns, maybe see some Igorots over at one of the parks over there. This, I think it's called Stone Park. And then, uh, yeah, I need, a, I need a crash. I am tired. All right, we got the strawberry and cream frappe. Got that large, it was only about like 165. This is a treat for going up and down that hill. Baguio is known for their strawberry fields. So the strawberry, that's what's up. Mm. Yeah. It's like a strawberry shortcake in a shake. So good. I need some ube in my life though. We'll ha I guess we'll have to save that for tomorrow. Oh yeah. Watching that sunset and uh, we'll head back to the hotel. Bye. And there it is. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to the sunset. We're fading out quick, but what a beautiful sight over here, huh? I probably should have just ate here at Dadois. We call Dadcation Dadois sometimes. That caps Jing Jing. 
<laughs> Once the sun starts to set, you could feel it getting colder. I was wondering why everyone wears like hoodies. I'm like, dude, it's 80 degrees. With the cold, it drops about 15 degrees at night here. So it could be 80 during the day and then down to 59, 65 at night. This is the front area of the Microtel by Wyndham. Whew, nice. Green and white facade. And this is the entryway. Oh, nice. Connects to the lobby. I took a nice nap, about an hour and a half, but I am drained. I did not want to leave the hotel. So I'm going to try out Amare, which is here at the Microtel. Grab some dinner. I got it about half an hour before it closed. So craving some pizza maybe. And we got a nice view of the Victory Liner bus station. Looks like they got some ice cream here. Can't find that ube though, man. Need some of that ube. So Amare La Cucina is actually a chain. They have a few other locations around the Philippines. This is the first I've ever seen one. Like I said, I'm not walking up or down any hills anymore. The body says no. The mind says maybe, but the body says no. Since this city is all about the strawberries, you gotta get a strawberry shake. I know I just had one a few hours ago. Oh man, it's like that Nestle quick stuff right there. Except the straw ain't that good. <laughs> the straw. It's good though. Mmm. That's my sarap. Strawberry fields make the world go round. All right guys, we got the prosciutto pizza with arugula, cheese, they put some of the tomatoes, and then of course you gotta put some chili olive oil on here. It's been a minute since I had a pizza, about a week. Mm. It's a nice wood-fired pizza. I like it. Mm. Good way to end the night. I don't know how people are going crazy over honey on their pizza. Not me. It's not all the craze for Jaycation. Like I said, I don't like adding too much sweet with my savory foods. It's good though. It goes well with the strawberry shake. And that was a good dinner. Amare was a really good spot. The wood-fired pizza hit the spot. And I'm still finishing this up. Also got a San Miguel light for a nightcap. So I wanted to show you my haul that I got around Baguio today. Peep this. It's a special Baguio Philippines Starbucks mug with strawberry fields. You got the lake. I like it. Might actually use this tomorrow morning because I don't have a coffee cup here. So this is cool. My first Starbucks coffee cup that I've bought on this trip. Next up, we got a strawberry magnet. That is awesome. We got the Wallis magnet. Look at that Wallis. It's a little broom that all us Filipinos know of. And then a strawberry Baguio City one. These are all cool. Momcation is gonna like those. And then I got these Baguio Sandos. So they're extra large. They probably fit me. You got this, it's only 200 pesos. No need to bargain down. That's only four bucks. That's less than four bucks. And I got another yellow one. I don't know, I might give one away. I might not. And then this one was just me walking by and I was like, dude, that looks so sick. And it's like a hella fake Philippines shorts, but it's got the Philippines flag and it's got pockets. That was the more important part. And it's uh, Jordan Clarkson. I had to get his 250 pesos. So that was about five bucks. I know I got one more thing. Oh yeah. I gotta show you the, the biggest one right here. The biggest thing that I got, I'm sure it was marked up and I'm not sure where you can get it like directly from. And I only saw this place selling it. This was at one place in the market selling it and it was the JJ Ube Jam. Premium Ube Fresh from Baguio. More creamier and more milk. Whew. April 23, 2024 expiration date. Oh crap, it expires April 23, 2024. I got a month to eat this jam. Challenge accepted. So breakfast is included here at Microtel. You got regular rice, you got your steamed rice, your hot dog, your corn dip. Uh-oh. Ginapa and marble potato, scrambled eggs, and then your vegetable section here. And then you also got your coffee station and cereal. They also have arroz caldo here too. All right, so I'm not much of a breakfast person, but I kept it simple. Got to have the corn beef, the hot dog. Got some potatoes, scrambled eggs, and fried rice. I love hotel breakfast in the Philippines. They really do come out with a good Filipino breakfast here. My favorite one was Chargao, I believe, at Bravo. It was Spanish and Filipino style. It was awesome. Nice corn beef. Like that, Jason, when you make corned beef and tocino, I always eat it. Every now and then, when I'm in a Longonisa mood, I get the Longonisa too. Mm. We'll eat light this morning. 
and I already had coffee. So we're good to go. Now I'll have about two or three hours to explore. We're gonna take a grab down to the Good Shepherd area. We need to find some ube before we leave. Oh, look at this house right here. Nice. So we are in a grab taxi headed to the Good Shepherd and we're gonna see if we can get the ube jam. They open at 9.30, but you wanna get there early to line up. And uh, let's see if we can grab a bottle or two at Good Shepherd. All right, nation. And now, now I'm saying it short. What up, nation? We're here at Good Shepherd. No, not Good Shepherd Parish in Nera Mesa. Good Shepherd Baguio. And this is where you can get your ube jam, the famous ube jam. And they have other ube stuff. So let's take a look and see what they have. So this is the line here. And they even have priority lines for senior citizens and visibly pregnant. So you have to be visibly pregnant to get priority. All right, what are ube flakes? Because I'm going to get that. And ube jam. Look at this. Ube crinkles, ube flakes, and ube jam. Oh, they even have gold label ube taro, oh no, taro white cheese. I'd get that, but it'd melt. So Good Shepherd's ube jam was created by nuns, and they're made by the nuns here since 1952. And when you go here to buy it, they open at 8.15. It says online 9.30, but it's 8.15. I was able to walk up. It is a Thursday, so uh, it was really quiet. But check this view out here at the Shepherd's Gallery. Wow, look at that. That is beautiful. Look at the mountains here. It's really nice to just take the time out and appreciate this. Acknowledge Baguio, Our Lady of the Good Shepherd with the baby and the kambing. See that aunties? No picking of the flowers. If they got you, you're in trouble. Wow, so the Good Shepherd Convent was the Baguio residence of an American Governor General to the Philippines, William Cameron Forbes. Probably why Forbes Town, or Forbes Wood, where I'm staying, is called Forbes Town. It was called Topside and sold to the Gatches family at the end of the Forbes term. 1946, the Good Shepherd Sisters in the Philippines bought the property for 45,000 pesos. The Good Shepherd Sisters were part of the religious Los Angeles foreign mission province based in the U.S. At the time, the turnover of the property was administered by three nuns headed by St. Mary Victory Walsh. They started their Baguio mission with a thousand pesos in cash and a few cartons of canned goods. Wow. There you go. You want to learn about the history of Ube Mount Made Farmer Partners. There's Ube Farmers right here. And that's them picking up the Philippine yams in the fields. See, this is stuff that excites me because you guys know how much I love ube. So this is it. This is where you pick it up. And then you got the Good Shepherd statue. That we had the same exact statue back home in my home community, Mira Mesa. Shout out to everybody back home, Mira Mesa. This is awesome. Checking out this convent and picking up all these ube treats. I got a few pasalubongs that I want to give to my family. So I bought that and they're all in my backpack right now. Ooh, they even have a basketball court here. There's the b-ball court. Am I going to eat ice cream at 9 in the morning? Just so I could say I had ube ice cream. So the Mount Maid Training Center open 8.10 to 4 p.m. No noon break. This is the shopping area here for Pasalubong. We're going to go take a look. I had to try some of the strawberries here. Since my name is JJ, I needed to get some buco pastillas by the 5 J's. And then strawberry flakes. And then I know Mom Cation likes these bags. So we got to get Mom Cation one of these bags. This is Virgie's store. <laughs> Maraming salamat. Thank you so much. It's very easy to convince me to go ube shopping, especially if the company's name is JJ's. I picked up some strawberry stuff because I love strawberry as well. I wouldn't say as much as ube, but strawberry is probably top three for me. Look at this. They have bulaluans here and panings bulalu. Oh, mukang sarap. <laughs> Thank you. We went to Redzel's, home of ube halaya and strawberry preserves. We gotta try this out, man. You know I love this stuff. Try the ube halaya. <laughs> oh, strawberry, man. Okay. That's good. This is the honey strawberry. All right, this is the entrance to Mines View Park. Let's go check it out. They have a couple of igorots surrounding the gate here and it's 10 pesos for adults and children, five for three years old to 12, and then two years old and below is free. These carabiners come in very, very handy. 
so I can have free hands with me. I definitely recommend that when traveling. So this is the map of Mines View Park. Let's go check it. Let's walk around. Breathe Baguio. And they have tons of souvenir shops here too as well. But let's explore a little bit. Ooh, they sell flowers over here and plants. Too bad we can't take this back to the US because Momcation would probably buy a few. Wow, they have lots of succulents over here and some mini bonsais. Mommy would love this place for sure. And then they have these everlasting sunflower looking lays here. Wow, you can even see the views over here. I don't even know which way to go. And then they got ponies here. And you can also dress up in traditional gear here and take pictures. You can rent the Cordillera attire, 50 pesos per person per head, and then take pictures over here. See, and they have all the ponies here. You can go on rides on the trails here. All right, be careful walking down these stairs. They could be slippery. So let's see what they have down here. There's this cool gazebo and then a viewing deck. Wow, what a nice view here. Look at that. Being over here, you can hear the roosters crowing and just looking at the mountains here with the haze in the distance. This is Baguio. This is cool. All right, that will do it from Mines View Park and got more pasalubong to take back and we're gonna head back down. I think I'm gonna do a live stream and then I'm gonna show you how I get back to Manila. A bus with a bed? Stay tuned. Final haul before we leave Baguio. I got more than I thought, but I want to give this ube jam to some family over here in the Philippines. So I'm gonna bring one of those ube jams. I'm gonna take one home, obviously. So that's good. They are good. I think there's an expiration date. And then I also got ube crinkles. Come on now. Everything nice cake shop. That looks really good. And I got ube flakes. Gotta get those ube products on. And then I'm just gonna give this to somebody as well over here in the Philippines. I ended up getting this bag for Momcation. You're welcome, Momcation. Oh, these strawberries are only 20 pesos. I wanna try them out. I heard strawberries here are really sweet. Then I got the five J's Buco Pastillas. They're ube. I hope they're still good. And then I got some strawberry flakes. Yum, yum. So I got a nice little haul here. Finally, got Dadcation a Baguio shirt and a couple of more Sandos tank tops to either give away or I'll wear myself. And that's the haul. Now I gotta figure out how to pack this stuff up. Figured I'd eat before we leave. This was only 85 pesos. This is the shawarma shack. Buy one, get one. Got the small pitas. Don't even know how to eat. Then you just rip it up. There it is. Let's try a little bit of shawarma. Mmm, spicy. Ooh, hella spicy. Ooh, oh my God. It's decent. Ooh. All right, I need water. Let's go to the bus. We made it down. We're just waiting for the 1215 Royal Class. It should be coming here in the next 15 minutes or so, right in front of me. So the Royal Bus passengers get to stay in the VIP lounge, I just found out. Didn't know that. And that is it right there. He's just waiting to park in one of these stalls. And you can see their double-decker beds. We'll give you a little tour when you get in there. I should have known that there was a VIP area. I just didn't look over this way. But it's all good. It's just like table seating, a little more comfortable. We'll board the bus and uh, do some editing, catch some Z's, and just see the scenery on the way back. All right, here we go. This is the Victory Liner. Look at that, double beds. Let's see, A2, A2. Hi, how are you? C2? A02, sir. Oh, A02. Uh, the upper one, sir. Upper. Sir, okay. may dana po ba kayo na mahalaga sa inyo? So, yeah, my, my laptop. Bale, yung gamit nyo, lagyan nyo na lang sa vacant seat kaya dapat lang din naman kayo sa kayo. Okay. Okay. Fully okay by you. Okay, salamat. Thank you. So A2, this is where I'm sitting here. Check this out. Blue lights. You get to recline. You even have a cubby here. They even have the middle seats. And then the bathroom's in the back. Check this out, guys. Nice. And then you got your ventilation here. They even have the room light. You can turn on and turn off. Feet fit comfortably there. And I think you can recline this even more so you can lie down. So let's take a tour. Now the back of the bus, wow, this is even more of a space right here. Look at that. And then 
the bathroom, sink toilet, toilet paper. Look at this one, that's the that's a good one. That's the biggest one. And it's uh, pretty empty over here. They even have USB and USB-C, wow. This is pretty cool. So you also get privacy curtains, they give you a blanket, you get your empanada, a water, and your charging cords are over here as well. Nice, comfortable ride back to Kubao. So the price for this was 1,500 pesos, which is not bad. So what, about 25 bucks? It's a good ride, four hours, get to recline. You could even recline this even more. Look, I finally figured it out. Oh, so I could sleep. Just five minutes past the departure time and we are now pulling away. Nice seeing you, Baguio. And that's the VIP and we are backing out of the bus station. Really nice day and I definitely would recommend staying at the Microtel, a really good restaurant. It's so convenient. Finally at the bottom of the mountain and we are just doing a straight shot south to Manila. You got your blinders on because the sun's out. Just a lot of farm field from here on out and you also got the blankets. So about a couple more hours and then we'll be in Cubao and then we'll call it a video. Did I just see that there's a Mexico Philippines? That's right, that last exit was Mexico. Shout out to all my Mexicanos out there. All right, about a four and a half hour journey and we made it back. We're here at the Victory Liner in the station in Cubao. It was good, pretty shaky, hard to go to the restroom. <laughs> But it was nice because you're able to lie down and I actually did sleep for like an hour. So that was nice. I did wish they had like a mini table for you to put your laptop or something on, but they didn't have that. But beggars can't be choosers. Hope you guys enjoyed this 24 hours in Baguio. I know this video is super long. So thank you so much for sticking with me. Maraming salamat. I'm gonna hop my grab. It was about a $9 ride back to BGC. So it would be about a 35 minute drive. So I'll get on that and we'll see you guys in the next one comment down below what was your favorite part about Baguio and in the words of me stay traveling Filipinas Mabuhay